I'm Lucy Fink, and this is 5 Days of Journaling. For my third episode in this series, I tried 5 Days of Meditation. And setting aside time each day to practice mindfulness really helped me feel happier and more at peace with myself. And I've heard that journaling can have very similar effects. And although I know that it's meant to be a very individual, personal activity, this week I'm up for the challenge of trying it and sharing my experiences with you. I sat on my bed this morning for 10 minutes and I just did stream of consciousness journaling. I didn't edit my thoughts, I didn't edit my grammar, I just wrote. And writing stream of consciousness about what I had to do and what was coming up and what was on my mind really helped lift some weight off. Here's my journal telling me that things are totally gonna work out. Let's hope she's right. So yesterday I wrote about what I had to do and what I needed to accomplish this week. It was sort of a to-do list, a task list, and I know it's gonna sound a little bit cliche and fluffy, so bear with me, but I felt physically different after my first day. I also learned something incredible about myself. Apparently, I haven't been giving myself enough time to spend time with myself. I wrote, the weekend was fast paced, and I wish I hadn't done so many activities. I rarely spend time alone. I want more moments like this. I knew that my mind could extend further and dive deeper if I put myself in a different, more colorful setting. So today I took it out of the home, and I sat in a few different locations around the city, and I journaled there. I thought more about the people around me and the world at large. So all of my stream of consciousness on my bed journaling started sentences with I need and I can't or I want, but I didn't start any sentences with I in today's journal entries. Interesting. It's been two days of stream of consciousness journaling and I know there's so much more to journaling than just sitting down and writing stream of consciousness. So this morning I tried goal oriented journaling. If you had asked me to do that last year it would have been a breeze, but this year I mean, my life is changing so much. So much exciting stuff is happening around me. I just have no idea what my goals are. Blank slate. I really wanted to approach this with some creativity. So today I'm gonna sit down with Piera Gilardi. She is the creative director and the co-founder at Refinery29, my place of employment. Here she's written a whole article about how to live a creative lifestyle. She's full of inspiring ideas about bringing more positivity into your life. She is definitely my creative icon, sitting down with her today and hoping I can get past this roadblock. So I do a couple different types of journaling. One is that I have this kind of like master list of like goals and those, some of them are really big, some of them are fun, some of them are like practical. And I'm kind of always adding to them and I have them organized by like different areas. That's good to know that when you're sitting and writing your goals, you're thinking beyond the scope of your career. And it didn't even cross my mind to write about personal stuff. Oh, life goals, brunch goals. Hair goals. Brow goals. Brow goals. You. Oh. Or my brow goals. Thank you. Yeah. At the end of every day, I have write my highlights of the day and my lowlights of the day. A, it like makes me reflect. And then I'm like, wow, I actually had some like really amazing highlights. And it makes you realize certain things that you appreciate. Like, you know, my highlight today will be doing your show. Or a highlight. Yeah. <laughs> One other tip that I think is super important if you're gonna get into the habit of journaling, because an idea can pop up at any time, is I always have a notebook on me. Always? Always. Do you have one on you right now? Oh. It's in my pocket. Here it is. Oh, it's so cute. Something that I've always had a huge interest in are dreams. And I've heard that if you start logging your dreams, and identifying recurring themes, it can get you a little bit closer to being able to lucid dream, which is where you're actually in a dream, but you know you're dreaming, so you start to be able to control your actions. So cool. So I made myself a dream journal. Dreams are everything. I kept this next to my bed, woke up at around 4.15 in the morning yesterday, turned the light on, wrote my dream down, and then went right back to bed. I know that there is so much potential for me to tap into my dreams as a source of creative inspiration, both for my job, but also for my personal life. And I know you're probably wondering what my dream was that I wrote down. So I'll read it to you while you enjoy this nice reenactment of me playing the part of Lucy in Lucy's dream. I was walking down the streets of New York City when suddenly I stopped. I realized that I left my keys at home, so I turned around to get them. Realizing they were locked in my apartment, I turned back around and kept walking. I now all of a sudden had french fries with me, so I started eating those. 
When I got to the last fry, I discovered that it was actually my apartment key. I stared at it for a moment, and then I woke up. Hmm. I wonder what that means. I can totally see how moving forward, I'd be able to learn more about myself and what I really like and what my place is in this great big world if I continue to journal. Dream journaling is something that I'm definitely keeping up after this week. I wonder if the french fry turning into a key had some sort of deeper meaning attached to it. Maybe everything that I want is actually right in front of me. Maybe I just want fries. We should get fries later. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Refinery29 on YouTube. And as always, comment below letting me know what you think I should try next week.